Hello everyone. I know this video has been very long awaited and I apologize for that. I was busy haunting swoops so I didn't have a chance to do this video and I actually did record it but I had to redo it because the original one, one, it wasn't long enough and I didn't cover as much as I wanted to and two, I could not get it to upload, so I just said, okay, I'll just redo this. So this video is about my personal camera gear and what I use, and um, I wanna give you guys a little bit of an insight on self-filming. Um, I'm for sure not the best out there, but I managed to, to do it fairly well, I think, at times. So um, I, this is just something that I get questioned on literally all the time so i just wanted to do a video so you guys can like all get the information at one time because it's hard to get back to everyone so that being said um i will also tell you guys like my recommendations for anyone who's new to filming um because what i have i don't necessarily recommend i've been doing it long enough that i just have slowly upgraded and upgraded um and to be honest a lot of my stuff is very outdated, probably by two or three years anyway, so I could even upgrade, but this is just what I have for now, and it does the job. So, with that being said, I am going to start, I guess, just with my main, my main rig. Um, so, this is a Sony A6300. And it is a DSLR, which is essentially a camera that can take both photos and video. Um, I am not the, like, camera guru by any means, so some of my terms might be out of touch because I, I don't know, I just know somewhat how to operate all of them. So anyway, this is a Sony. Um, the lens I have on it is an 18 to 200, um, I think, yes, 18 to 200. I used to film with an 18 to 135, but that lens just kind of stopped working on me, so I got a, a lens with a little bit more zoom, so I can obviously film a lot farther away, but also still have that close range ability. So I really like this lens. Um, I would say the one thing I dislike is this: the focus is very hypersensitive. I run manual like 99% of the time. So if you're not like perfectly, perfectly focused on something, you definitely notice it when you blow it up to edit. So I would say I don't love that. My old lens was a lot uh, more forgiving with that, but I still really like the fact that I can film a lot farther with this but it's also like compact and not overly heavy and big so this is a lens that I really like and I really actually just recently got it so I'm excited to kind of play around with it more but um so that is my lens and um the main reason that I decided to get a second angle um camera is I really love this camera like Sony just knocks it out of the park in my opinion um, but the screen is only able to just kind of rotate it doesn't like flip around fully um, so whenever I was doing interviews it was always difficult to know exactly where I was focusing or you know I'd have to like press play and then like look and then make sure <laughs> so it was always such a process um, which kind of is unfortunate but um, I I dealt with it, but um, I decided that I needed a second shot angle anyway, so um, that is why I got my little Canon guy, and this is a Canon G7X Mark III, I believe, and I put on a little cold shoe mount, um, which I will get to in a second, but um, my least favorite thing about this is the mic. The internal mic is not good whatsoever and any any like bit of wind will just like clear everything out so it's really hard to hear sometimes so i had to attach this so i could put a, a separate mic on it um 
and I also have this like really nifty like tripod thing. I honestly couldn't even tell you where I got this. You probably just Google like small vlogging tripod and find something like this, but I love it. I actually recently broke one of the legs on it. It's, it's kind of like one of them bendy deals. So I can wrap it around limbs or like in a tree or wherever I need to like put it, it, it goes. One of these like doesn't want to work awesome, but I guess this will. Um, so anyway, the lens or the, uh, well, the lens on this is a 8.8 to 36.8 and it's a F 1.8. So essentially it's really, really good in low lighting. Um, this is a F 3.5, I think. So still okay, but not amazing. Um, but the screen flips up so I can see what I'm filming. So I tend to use this as like my interview camera and then this one I use for filming deer or extra b-roll which is essentially clips that are just of anything that's happening like a leaf blowing. <laughs> so um, that's kind of just how I differentiate them. This this one does really really well in low lighting so it's, it's nice for that but the um, zoom on it is like a little manual like a little um, I don't actually know what the zoom is called, like this one versus this one. This one you have to like manually turn, um, to zoom based on like how zoomed in and out your lens is. This one you just like choose, um, like you can only zoom in so far basically. I don't know why that was confusing for me to say, but basically, um, this one's not for anything really except very close range things. So I would never like try to film a deer with this um, unless I absolutely had to, which I have had to do, but it's very rare. Um, so anyway, um, like I said, this is a really good camera. Um, it can also take photos, not as good of photos. It's like a kind of point and shoot deal. This one I definitely prefer to take pictures with. Um, but this uh, little attachment that I was talking about holds external mics and I personally use the Rode Wireless Go. Um, these are the, the Gen 2 version. I have not used these yet because I had the original Rode Wireless Go and I really love them but I dropped one of these in the woods and could not find it so I just decided to upgrade so I actually haven't used these yet but I I'm excited because they're really really good um, their battery lasts a long time I personally haven't pushed it like in really cold weather all day so I don't know if they would last that long but um, I would say comparing to other mics they're they're pretty good and they're not crazy expensive so um, yeah I would recommend these but with that um, so this little attachment this is Okay, so this is the one that would go here. So it kind of just like slides in like that. I don't love that, but it's kind of just what I have to work with. And then um, for the piece that goes, I think this is called the transmitter. And then this is like the mic side. You can also do a lavalier mic, which is essentially you just plug it in. Um, and then you can just run the wire up to like here or just attach it however makes sense um that way you don't have this big chunky thing just sitting here which I don't know if you guys may have seen that in some of my videos because I didn't have this piece um so anyway that is the mic system that I've been using sometimes I just use the regular internal mic in this and a lot of the time I don't even use this I will just overlap the footage from here to like if I'm filming with this at the same time if a deer's coming in I will just use the uh, sound from this camera um, and if you I mean like you could honestly get really crazy with it and have separate uh, mics for each of these the mic that's on this one is just plugged into the body of the camera itself so it's not like I don't need an extra battery or anything crazy um, I don't even know what this is called, just the, the road, I call it the puffy, but it's like a road 
micro, I think. Video micro. So I like it, really no complaints. It's very like baseline mic. It's nothing like extravagant, but it does the job. So I really uh, don't have any issues with it. Um, trying to think of like specific features that I would say. Um, I guess the biggest thing is like, so this camera, you can swap lenses. Um, I like this just for very like standard tree stand type stuff that I tend to do or turkeys. Um, I think this, this size lens is like perfect because it's just, you know, a lot of my stuff that I'm doing is very close range. So it's literally good for that. This one, you, you can't swap the lens out. It just is what it is. Um, like I said, you could zoom a little bit, but I, I don't really recommend it. So that is my like essential setup. It's what I have that I've been using actually for a few years now. Um, and I really don't have any complaints. I thought about adding like a GoPro or some like tiny little uh, third angle just to like put on my bow or something. But then I also think that that's a lot more buttons I got to press when a deer's coming in. So that's why I haven't done that yet. But I would really like to. Um, I might mess around with it and just kind of see how that does. But my um, recommendations, I guess, would be the next thing. Um, so for anybody that has never filmed before, I don't recommend, especially, I definitely don't recommend this. Um, I think what you should do is get some sort of handy cam, which is like a camcorder. Um, you can get really good ones, compact ones, just kind of depends on your budget. There's ones that are like two, three hundred dollars all the way up till thousands of dollars. So, um, pros to that is you can find one in your budget. Um, and a lot of the less expensive ones do really well. Like they can film in 4k, which is, I would recommend that for sure. If you, if you can afford it. Um, and they're just really handy. They're a lot of times they're super compact and they're probably about the same size as this, maybe a touch longer and maybe a little bit more narrow. Um, but for the most part, those are really, really good starter cameras. Um, I used one for a few years, um, mixed in with other cameras that I had, and I really didn't have any issues with it. It was really nice. The zoom is very quick on it. It's similar to this where you just kind of like push a tab. Um, so if a deer is coming in, it's, you don't have to fumble with the manual. Um, you can just run everything in full auto and a lot of times that does really well. Um, which I would recommend running full auto anyway if you're just starting out because trying to, the more you have to do with the camera, um, the less time you have to get ready when a deer is coming in. So I would just advise, <laughs> like, less is more sometimes. Um, uh, I would say the cons though is the camcorder they either don't take photos or they just take really crappy photos. So obviously everyone has a phone these days. So if you're cool with it, I would just say, you know, sacrifice the photo side, take photos with your cam like your, your phone camera and you could honestly be fine with that. Um, if you don't want to, then you could get a DSLR and that has obviously the option to do both. Um, that's literally just a personal preference thing, but I will say these are, you can run them in auto, but I wouldn't advise this for a first camera. When you decide that you want to like, okay, I have experience now and I want to like maybe get into the photo side of things, then I would say you can move on to this. Um, and then there's even cameras that I refuse to touch because it's just not worth my time for what I'm doing. If I was if I was solely a camera person, then I would you know obviously get something like Chris has an FX6, which is literally like you can film movies with that, and that's just too much for me. Like I there's, there's just too many buttons, and I totally could run it, but not by myself when I'm trying to hunt too. <laughs> so self filming stuff, I really like to try to keep it very simple, um, just for the sole reason of like you also trying to hunt. So. Um, that is why I would say I would recommend a handy cam um, 
and I'm trying to think if there's any other. I mean, like, if you really don't have the budget for stuff and you have a phone, you can film with your phone, too. Um, I think there's, like, little, like, tiny camera arms that you can get. I don't personally know because I don't use my phone, but um, that's always an option. And then I'm trying to think. For second cameras, like or like second angle cameras, any type of vlogging camera where you can like flip the screen is probably gonna be fine. Um, really any camera that's on the market like today is something that you could use, it's, it's gonna be fine. Um, it's just a matter of like finding what you personally like. Um, between the brands, so like Sony, Canon, which obviously I have one of each, I don't necessarily recommend that unless you really don't care about color. Um, I really don't notice too much of a color difference between these two, but I will say that like every brand has its own sort of like internal color scheme that they have, um, which is kind of complex, but you will notice it when you're editing. Um, if I would take this camera versus just like a... I don't even know what the newest Canon is, but you would like match them up if you would sit there and film the same thing and then go to edit both of them side by side, you would tell that they're, they look different. So, um, I would say pick a brand and stick with it. <laughs> um, Sony and Canon are personally my top choices, I would say, are like the best on the market. Um, Nikon has some okay stuff, but I've just never been a Nikon fan, so no hate to Nikon, but <laughs> I love my Sonys personally. Um, so yeah, I think that is like the extent of like my recommendations. There's all kinds of stuff you guys can do. You just kind of have to like do your research and figure out, okay, like, you know, am I filming myself? Am I filming somebody else? Is somebody else filming me? You know, and, and you got to just, like, be honest with yourself of, like, okay, what is my experience level? So, um, I wouldn't try to get yourself, like, in over your head to start. Um, and it's one of those things, like, cameras are expensive. I totally get it. That's kind of why I haven't upgraded recently. Um, but, you know, you just have to, like, kind of work your way up and find what works best for the moment. And in my opinion, um... It's not the camera that's going to make or break your footage. It's your personal creative eye. So if you're not creative, <laughs> your cameras are not going to be um, helpful to you no matter how much money you spend. And I think that's kind of with anything. But um, so, yeah, just honestly, I would get what you can afford, play around with it, learn how to use it really well and just play with all the features of it um, and then, you know, take it hunting and see see how it does for you. So that is my camera gear. I think I covered everything and I hope I answered all of your questions. It's pretty basic. Like I said, I really like to keep stuff pretty simple. Um, so if any of you guys have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment. I will do my best to get back to everybody and I wish you the best of luck. It's really fun. It's very, uh, frustrating at times. There's a lot of deer that have survived because I had the camera. Um, so you also have to keep that in mind that there's a good chance you're going to screw up some hunts just because you're trying to film it, which, you know, some people care, some people don't. I personally really like to try to get everything on video. Um, obviously, I'm trying to share stuff with you guys too, but um, yeah, so that's obviously personal preference, but I would just be aware that it can be difficult. <laughs> so, Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I am going to start hunting this week again. So looking forward to it. So thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one.